Well, at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we think it's a big deal. But there are a lot of people out there who don't think the birth of Jesus is very special. Uh, There's a Chinese proverb that says, there are many paths to the top of the mountain, but the mountaintop view is always the same. No matter how many different religions there are, they all reach God eventually. And there's actually a similar Hindu story. It says there was a king, and he got a whole lot of um, blind people to go and tell him what an elephant was like. So one of them goes and grabs the, the, the ear and says, God, oh, the, elephant, the elephant is like a big fan. Another one goes and grabs the trunk of the elephant and says, an elephant is like a big fire hose. You know, and, and, and the story is meant to say, well, they all had part of the elephant right. They kind of all are equally valid. Today it's popular to have the same view. Everyone's beliefs are equally valid. And you're intolerant Christians if you say Jesus is the only way. All of you are intolerant because you believe Jesus is the only way. And that seems like a very tolerant view. But do all paths equally lead to God? Are they all equally valid? Can any of us claim to have gone to the top of the mountain who have met with God? um, And God has told us how to get to him. And come back down from God and told everyone, this is how you get to God. And if none of us have had that experience with God, all we're doing is guessing, right? Well, let's approach this from a different vantage point. If God made you, then surely he must be interested in how you respond to him. Surely he would want to do something to grab your attention to make himself clearer. And that's what we find in John chapter 1 that we're looking at today. John was an eyewitness of Jesus' life, death, and his resurrection. Um, And he actually says in the first couple of verses, he said, Jesus is the Word. The Word has always existed with God, in close relationship with God. And in fact, Jesus, the Word, made everything, made the universe And Jesus, about Jesus, about the Word, look at verse 14. It says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now this point takes us back to the Old Testament, where God reveals His glory to Moses. And Moses pitches a tent at the bottom of Mount Sinai. And it says in Exodus 33 verse 11, the Lord would speak to him face to face as if to a friend. Because interestingly in John 1 when it says he, he dwelt among us, it literally means he tented among us. He tabernacled, he tented, he pitched his tent among us. This tells us God wants to be close to us. If, say, I built a house next to your house, wherever you live, and it was like a palace and had huge walls and, like, dogs that were, like, behind the walls barking, it said, beware the dog. What would that say about how much I wanted to get to know you? probably means I don't want to get to know many people at all. I just want to kind of stay closed off. But say, instead, someone came, say I came, but instead I actually pitched a tent in your backyard, right? As awkward as that would be, It would mean I kind of probably want to come in and eat some of your food and hang out, right? Um, But I'm not saying I'm going to do that. It indicates a close relationship. Jesus pitched his tent among us. That's how close he wanted to come to us. So how did God reveal himself? Well, John is saying God came down the mountain, so to speak, in Jesus to live among us. Jesus isn't just another blind man making guesses like maybe another God of another religion or another prophet from another religion, making guesses. He's seen God. He is God. He can tell us exactly what God is like and how we can have a relationship with him. So we don't need to be in the dark about God at Christmas. God has gone beyond just paper or some one person's experience somewhere that no one else has experienced. He's actually come down and he's pitched his tent in our backyard on earth So when you come to know what Jesus is like, you come to know what God is like. But why did God reveal himself in Jesus? Look with me at verse 10. He was in the world, 
And the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. Think about that. Though the world was made through Jesus, it did not recognise Jesus, but rejected Jesus. Imagine a mother is carrying a baby for nine months in the womb. Think of all that goes into that. We just had a baby um, five months ago. Pip would exercise right. She sleeps right. She's preparing herself. And in the weeks before the baby, the longing intensifies. You can't wait to meet that baby, to see what the baby looks like and to, to hold that baby. And then imagine that a child is born and immediately it says, I hate you. I want nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. Don't come near me. Even if that means I want to disconnect myself from you, the source of my life. Even if that means death. This is how all of us have responded to God, our creator. He creates us for a relationship with him. And we say, stuff you, God. I'm going to determine right and wrong for myself. You do you, God. I'm going to do me. I make my own own rules. YOLO. Well, herein lies the biggest problem all of us have. We have rejected God. We live as if we don't need God. Maybe when we're going through a hard time, we might pray to him. But the rest of the time, we don't need God. We're fine on our own. Think of how much that must pain God, the one who made us. This is our greatest problem. And it means we're under God's judgment. There's a famous quote um, by someone who says, If God thought our greatest need was to do with money and the economy, he would have sent a business person. If God thought our our greatest need was to make sure our country is safe from other attacks from other countries, he would have sent a politician. If God thought our greatest need was COVID-19, he would have sent us a doctor. But he saw that our greatest need was our rejection of God, our rebellion, the fact we're under God's judgment... So he sent us a saviour. And this is good news because verse 12 says, But to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. In other words, it's not because of anything you've done, but because of the free gift of God's grace, he sent Jesus to save you so you can become children of God. Be brought back into his family. Jesus became what we are on the cross, someone under God's judgment, so we might become what he is, a child of God. So God isn't indifferent to how we respond to him. God actually cares and wants a deep relationship with each and every one of you. God's made himself clear so we can have certainty about which road leads up the mountain to God because God came down the mountain in Jesus. And this is the message we need to share with our friends and family at Christmas. It's not unloving to tell our friends there's only one way to be saved through Jesus. Think about it this way. If there's a burning building and there's only one door that leads to safety, it's actually unloving to say, choose any door you want. They're all equally the same. You do you. That's actually unloving, right? Because you know any other door is going to lead to their judgment. Of course you wouldn't say that in a burning building. And neither should we say that when it comes to Jesus. He is the only door to safety. How do we know? How do we know Jesus is the only way? Because eyewitnesses like John have recorded his birth at Christmas, his death and resurrection at Easter. And unlike every other religion where someone had a private revelation over there that nobody else saw, you can fact check Jesus' birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. In the Gospels. And we can't have deep relationship with anyone if we fail to listen and understand them. So God is speaking to you today through the Bible. If Christians are right about Jesus being God, then every other religion fails in a serious way to love God and relate to him. And if we're wrong about Jesus being God, then maybe another religion is right about Jesus being a a good moral teacher or a prophet. You can't have it both ways. It's either Jesus and he's the only way there, or maybe there's another way. This is why in the Quran, the Muslim's holy book, if you say Jesus is God, you've committed blasphemy, and in some places you get killed for it. Right? It's no trivial, it's no light matter. God is not indifferent to how we respond to him. He has made his thought very clear in the person of Jesus, which means we have two choices. This Christmas, 
we can reject our maker. Like the earth saying to the sun, I don't need you. We can distance ourselves from the source of our life and remain in the darkness and place ourselves under God's judgment. Or we can believe in the person of Jesus and in believing come to know God and enter into a relationship with God where we can call him our father and we can become his sons and daughters. Long ago, there ruled in Persia a wise and good king. He loved his people and he actually wanted to know how they lived. He wanted to know about their hardships. He wanted to share with them his wealth. He wanted a relationship with them. So often he dressed in the poor people's clothes and became like a beggar. And he went to the homes of the poor. And no one recognised he was the ruler. One time he visited a very poor man. And he, he, he went into the dungeon, into the cellar with that poor man, and he ate his gross food. And he spoke cheerfully to that person, face to face, like a friend. Then he left. And then later he came back and he visited that poor man again. And he showed himself who he really was, that he was the ruler. The king thought the man would say, give me some gifts. But he didn't. Instead, the poor man said, you left your palace and your glory to visit me in the dark, in this dark, dreary place. You ate the gross food that I ate. You brought gladness to my heart. To others, you've given your rich gifts, but to me, you gave yourself. Well, God himself, the king of glory, came down the mountain at Christmas and took on flesh to give himself to you and to me. He became what we are, that he might make us what he is, a child of God. So let's Respond to Jesus by trusting him this Christmas. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you at Christmas. Jesus came down the mountain to reveal who you are to us, to show us that there is one way to you, and it's through Jesus. We thank you that you love us so much that Jesus would become what we are under God's judgment, to become what he is, a child of God. Help us to not only believe this, but to share it with our friends and family this Christmas so they can share the same hope as us. In Jesus' name, amen.